Sarah Spain, Israel Gutierrez, Clinton Yates, grading the Giants' effort and scheme and discipline and disaster last night. Uh, reviewing Dodgers, Brewers, Astros, Sox, and also the increasing possibility Austin Matthews is going to score 143 goals this year. Let's go around the horn. It's Around the Horn, the show of competitive banter. Here's Tony Rielli. Eagles 34, Giants 13, grading New York's performance on effort, scheme, attitude, discipline, F, 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 F. How did it get like this? Why is it stuck on this? Could it be the end of Eli? Time to move on, Ian O'Connor wrote. Pat Sherman today, we believe in Eli. Start there, Sarah. Is it time for the Giants to make a move? Is there a move they can possibly make? Is Eli the one that's holding this team back? There are a handful of things holding them back. Eli is a main one of them. The offensive line is certainly not making things easy for him. They should have gotten rid of him last year after he was benched, when the streak was ended, when they fired their coach. It felt like a time for renewal and a time when they had an opportunity to draft a new quarterback and then move forward with this being OBJ and that new quarterback and that new coach's team. Unfortunately, they didn't. And now they've got Eli after the window when he was efficient. Right now, he's 32nd in the league in, in pass yards per, in yards per pass. He's 20 27th with a touchdown on only 3.2% of his passes. This is a guy that's clearly past his prime, and the only thing they can do, which will help them tank even more and get them a quarterback in the next draft, is to see what they've got with their fourth-round pick and let Eli sit and, and fade off into the sunset. So that's how you'd play this. You would bench Eli again. Now, how about you, Woody Page? Well, I certainly don't go to Lavetta or Tanny. I mean, you might as well give up totally on the season, and you are indeed t uh, tanking. But with that offensive line, which they were trying to put back together with drafting Hernandez and bringing Nate Solder over as a free agent for the Patriots, that just has totally failed them. When Eli Manning has 20 sacks through the season so far, I mean, that leads the league. He's got no time. And Shermer was saying, we believe in Eli. He was caught on the sidelines going, throw the football, throw the football. So I don't know that that showed a lot of belief in him. But it's, it's, it's not only the offense, the defense against the Eagles look terrible. Uh, Beckham, what he's doing is not helping this team whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Is real good to hear yeah, I think I think it's a little late. Like I think they should have gotten uh, rid of Eli or moved on from Eli last year. And it, you saw this coming from you know 2012 after they won that Super Bowl. His record has not been good, and you see him in that pocket. Yes, the offensive line has not been good, but on the other side, you saw Carson Wentz being able to navigate a pocket that was collapsing around him as well. So it's a combination of everything. But the one thing that is clear is Eli is well past his prime. It's obvious that that second Super Bowl bought him even more time, four or five years even, and. And now they're judging this. And, they're, again, they're looking at it kind of a little bit too late when you've got OBJ, who's only going to be in his prime for so much longer, and obviously a young running back in Saquon Barkley. I, I want to ask this, though, and, Clinton, you, maybe you can answer it first. Okay, is it Eli? Is it his arm where it is right now? Is it the scheme? Because in the first quarter of last night's game, the longest pass he threw over the line of scrimmage was two yards in the air. That was the furthest pass that was thrown and completed in the first quarter. Go ahead, Clinton. To me, it's somewhat of both. I mean, it's the scheme and the fact that he can't seem to get the ball anywhere. But if I'm the Giants at this point, I am focalized completely on Saquon Barkley. I mean, get him Focalize. the ball, whether you're running it or whether or not you're throwing it to him. Get him the rock any way that you can. My problem with Eli is as much ball security and turnovers as it, any, as it is anything from a decision-making standpoint. Half the time yeah. he gets sacked, he drops the ball. All right, And that's a huge issue overall. But yeah. it's not like they have a whole ton of things happening. You either get the ball to Beckham or you get it to Barkley, and they don't seem to be able to do either one, and that to me is a scheme issue. Well, let's focalize on, on what they are doing well, if anything. It's Saquon Barkley, right? So yeah. the debate over whether Saquon Barkley is proving he deserves to be the number two pick, or the Giants are proving they never should have taken Saquon Barkley number two because they have so many issues. Sarah, where are you with that? Well, quickly in regards to the game planning, I think Eli's the bottom five in the league in passes over 20 yards. So it might be that the reason yeah. they're not calling them is because he can't throw them. When it comes to Saquon Barkley, I think it can be true that you both – 
chose the best player in the draft and still chose wrong. He is clearly showing that he's deserving of where he was picked, but I don't think that was the right pick for the Giants at this point in their franchise. It's hard to look past a guy like that when you see what he can do. But what is he doing for you when he goes 100 and 100, passing and receiving, and you still lose by 21 points? You don't have the pieces around him, and you have a small window with a running back like that, so they needed to go quarterback first. Anybody else want to weigh in on that? Woody Page, you? Well, Sarah's totally right. He was the best player in the draft, and he's in the wrong position yeah, in New York. Right. I you mean, go. Elliott, when he went to Dallas, they had a great offensive li line and a good young quarterback, and the Giants don't. Uh, thank you for allowing me to vocalize that. Mm-hmm. Israel. <laughs> Saquon is number one pick type of talent. It just happens to be not the perfect fit, but it just goes to show you how important that running back position is. He's probably already more important to the team than Odell Beckham because you can get him the ball so much easier. And now since you invoke the name Odell Beckham, real quick on this one, into the locker room two seconds before halftime, um, working out, punching the fan, anything to either of those, uh, Clinton Yates? It's a deal just because it doesn't seem like he's a very happy player right now, and that to me is the largest problem. If he's yelling on the sideline, if he's leaving early, I'm not saying that it's necessarily taking a whole ton away from their offense, but he's not happy, and he's a guy that plays better. Should he be happy the way this team looks right now, or is this an understandable <laughs> response, Sarah Spain? Yeah it's, it's understandable. yeah, it's understandable that he's so angry, and we're used to this from him right now. Maybe you'd like him to contain it, but it doesn't bother me. This is just we're keeping our eyes on him because we're used to it. And now, since we're after the horn here, uh, maybe we'll talk about the defending champs. Can you learn anything about the Eagles <laughs> from a game like this, Israel? I, I think so. I think we, you know, we talked about them going into the week, said, hey, uh, we're, we're comfortable about them, be confident with them because of last year. That offensive line is falling apart, et cetera. But, again, you saw Carson Wentz, even with an offensive line that wasn't doing its, uh, its best, being able to navigate that pocket. He was able to, to look a lot more comfortable in that offense. And you could tell that defensive line. Now, you say what you will about that offensive line for the Giants. The defensive line was getting pressure constantly. It looked a lot more like the Eagles of last year. <laughs> it's going to be looking like the NFC East might Get to nine wins this year, ten wins at the most, and that'll be pretty good. We'll move on. Week six, Chiefs Patriots. When they said, when will we know about the Chiefs? Wait for the Patriots, they said. When they said, when will we know about the Patriots? Wait for a game in October. Nobody said. So I don't know. For whom will this game prove more, Israel? I think for, for the Patriots here, the Chiefs, not only have they got onto the great start, not only do they know who Patrick Mahomes is, that offense has scored 25-plus points in 10 games. They've already scored at least 27 in, in a game in this season. They don't need to go into New England to prove themselves. They can prove themselves even further by going there. The Pats got healthy off the Dolphins and the Colts. That's not that impressive. Mm -hmm. Clint Yates? That is unbelievable to hear from me all year long, every single year. I hear about if we wait till the end of the season, then we'll finally know where the paths are going to be. Then for the Chiefs, this is a year plus coming after you got rid of Alex Smith and the Mahomes situation nobody wanted to buy into. Now you've actually got an opponent that can prove to not just him, but also Andy Reid in terms of his ability to do something. This is a much bigger game for the Chiefs by every single measure, in my opinion. Woody Page? Clint's right. I, I totally believe it. I, Clint, let me help you out here. Under Andy Reid, they have been the last team to lose in five different seasons. And guess what happened in those five seasons? They didn't even win a playoff game. Not once. So it's more important to the Chiefs that they got to continue to roll and make it different this year. The Patriots, we know they're going to be around because of the division they're in. But the Chiefs have to keep this going and show people they can win, as they did last year in the opening game in New England. That's a real good stat, Woody Page, that an Andy Reid team, we're counting uh, Philadelphia and Kansas City here, have been the last team to be undefeated in, in a season. Sarah Spain, how about you? I got some stats for you, and here's why I think it's more important to see the Chiefs win. Because even though the Chiefs can move to 6-0 and and have the tiebreaker against the Pats, and that clearly means it's important for them, if they lose to the Patriots, we won't be that surprised, right? The Patriots have won the last 11 straight games against teams who came into the matchup with a better record than them. They're also 23-0 and wow. in their last 23 against teams with a quarterback under 25. So the Chiefs can go in there and lose, and we'll say we haven't learned that much against the Chiefs. This is just the Pats doing what they do. If the Chiefs win that tells us way more about both teams. That also an incredible set, Sarah Payne, uh, Sarah Spain, that the Patriots go in and they beat teams. Sarah Payne is actually a great name for you. <laughs> Sarah Payne. Well, you my wrestling career later. Uh, <laughs> Patriots favored this game. Does that surprise anybody, Clinton? Yeah. Yeah. No. It doesn't. I mean, no. the Patriots, everybody thinks they're going to win every game. This Woody, is my entire point. Is that which is the Chiefs. Yeah, you get two points for home field advantage, so it's close enough. But I would have thought the Chiefs would have been slightly a favorite. 
Make a pick so I can mute some faces on Monday. Israel, who you got? Chiefs. Yates. Chiefs. Page. Chiefs. And prediction pain. Well, just, I'll just go Pats. I'll be I'll be out. Uh, Why not? <laughs> we'll move on. Let's talk baseball tonight. NLCS game one. Uh, first pitch in about three hours. Dodgers throwing Kershaw. Brewers. Gio Gonzalez. Tomorrow game two. Ryu and Wade Miley. Clinton. What is LA's biggest strength going in? And what is Milwaukee's biggest strength going in? And what will decide this series? <sighs> For me, it's the Dodgers starting pitching. And again, they are awash with lefties, and I think that that's where their main advantage is. But for the Brewers, I think it comes in their outfield and their relief pitching. That's where they seem to be better. They've got one of the best relief staffs in the entire of the bigs, not just the National League. And I think that that advantage of Yelich and Kane is a bigger deal out there than what they have going on in right field with the Dodgers. I don't think that the Brewers are going to win this series. I think it's going to come down to the fact that there's the Kershaw element for the Dodgers, and you just can't count against him when he's going out there throwing. Woody Page? Uh, Clinton's on to something. I think it's also the starting pitching of the Dodgers that they need out of their three starters coming up to have them go seven innings because their weakness is their middle relief. If they can get to Jansen and get to the late part of the bullpen, I think they'll be fine. But if they're only pitching four or five innings, I think the Brewers are going to jump on that. If I were Kershaw, I'd just walk Yelich every time he comes up. Be like Barry Bonds, <laughs> just walking. In regard to the Brewers, Christian Yelich is right. now Barry Bonds here to you, Woody Page. Interesting. Okay. When All he's right. hitting, oh, when he's hitting over 500 against Kershaw, yeah. yeah, I just send him to first base. But the Brewers really pitching again. If they if they can get, uh, keep their starting pitching under control, get to that bullpen, they'll be in good shape, and because they'll also be ahead. Sarah. Yeah, I think I think the Dodgers. It's it's making sure that that bullpen, if they get through those starters quickly, holds up because we saw that stretch during the season where they lost four games in a row on the last at bat and absolutely imploded. So if somebody gets to their starters, that could be a problem for them, which could be Christian Yelich because as Woody noted, he's, he's a 9 of 17 yeah. in his career against Woody Kershaw. Kershaw looks like it's the key for them being able to maybe go three times, but if Yelich can get to him and he doesn't pitch around him, then you got to go to that bullpen and that's the issue, especially when we know that, as everyone said, Milwaukee's bullpen Pen is their superstars. Israel Gutierrez. The Dodgers have the depth primarily in that starting rotation, so they need to get to the Milwaukee starters. They need to start hitting early because look at that sweep against the Rockies. The Milwaukee had three starters. One goes five innings, one goes four and two-thirds, one goes three. So they're playing that bullpen strength. And if you're talking about a seven-game series, that's a little bit fragile there. Maybe games four, five, six, and seven, that bullpen's a little damaged. So get to those starters early. Milwaukee will be in shambles by the end of the series. An interesting point, Israel. Did you guys read Bill Plasky today in the LA Times? Apparently, oh, yeah. the series is about the Dodgers. That, that's what, Shocking. That's the conclusion he gave to him, that it's about the Dodgers. Uh, look at those scores. Shocking. Age and Spain. What are you wearing today, Clinton Yates? Let me see that sweatshirt. What are you Millennium wearing? Millennium Falcon, baby. Oh, you better, you better do a Kessel run and buy or sell. That's next. Stick around. Ted what Baker. What are Sarah wearing? Yeah, Ted so Baker. Baker. Beautiful. Thank you. Bomber. Thank you. Ted Baker, Bomber, slide, Spain. Wandering through secret